I'm excited. I'm really excited. I see my son Wes on, and Wes is one of my my best friends. My son Wesley Carter. I see Dr. Gene Bratton. I see Melanie Bias from down here in Gray, Georgia. I see many people, but I am really happy to see my friend and former student from Upper Derby High School, Kathleen Kuhn, and Kathleen and her precious husband. Uh, from up there in northern Penn, central Pennsylvania, actually, when you go up 100, Route 100, you got to ride past their house. Kathleen, it is so good to see you and and um, been staying in contact with you over the years and how uh, what a great woman you are, woman of God, and, and proclaiming the word. and Not only just talking the talk, but you've been walking the walk. So I want to give a shout out to all of you. And to all of the people who are online with us today and those who are going to be listening to the, the recording, many churches have shut down for this, this Sunday. And uh, we're in a national emergency, but praise God for the online church and for the online churches, uh, not only throughout America, but throughout the world. And we... Back to Basics Ministries, we are a pioneer in the online church, and I'm seeing great results of our fruit and labor as God brings forth more and more online churches. Because when emergencies come up, uh, many churches uh, cannot open up, and uh, hey, uh, one day we might be under martial law. Hope not. But there are some communities today where uh, travel is restricted, and assembly is restricted. So this is just the handwriting on the wall, ladies and gentlemen. But praise God for the online church and, and, and God's servants who, uh, um, uh, who provide these services so that people can communicate with us. And as we communicate with the Lord together via the cell phone or the internet. So we welcome you to the Back to Basics Ministries online church. We've been online for four or five years. We're one of the pioneers in the online church movement. And the online church is not a breakaway from the brick and mortar church. We complement one another. Jesus said in, in a place called Caesarea Philippi, he said, on this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And so the online church goes places where the brick-and-mortar church cannot go, and we can take the gospel together, the brick-and-mortar church and the online church together as we unite in uni unity. We can take the gospel to the uttermost parts of the world. We can use technology, and we can use the scientific developments that God has blessed people to incorporate. And so we, as we stand together, ladies and gentlemen, united, great things can happen. So we just bless God. We praise God. And um, um, I think Dr. Jean Bratton is on with us. Dr. Jean, if you are, come on and say hello to us. She's the pastor of... Living Water Fellowship in Wilmington, Delaware. Hello, everyone. Um, have, I'm really, really glad that you didn't think it was robbery just to call in. You know, we can't be slothful about the work of Jesus Christ and what we're called to do. So I know as Apostle Carter goes forth, everybody, I'm going to steal his words, expect God to bless. Expect God to bless. Praise God. Praise God. Thank God for Dr. Jean Bratton. We have, she and I have partnered in the ministry for over 30 years, and God is using her mightily in Wilmington, Delaware, and may God continue to bless you and use you. Uh, she's so important in our, our uh, powerful Back to Basic School of Ministry, and what a mighty woman of God. And we, we want to bring uh, Melanie Bias in from Gray, Georgia, that she'll give us greetings from Gray, Georgia, down there near Macon. Yeah, good morning, church. It's a beautiful day down here. I know you're having a wonderful day yourself. Um, it's great to be on and uh, blessed that God has us here today. Thank you, Pastor. 
Praise God. God bless you, Melanie. God bless you, Melanie. Just a few more people. I uh, always like my son to greet us and give us greetings. Wes Carter, Wesley Carter, Pennsville, New Jersey. Come on, Wes. Say hello to us. Hey, good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. And thank God that we have a church to go to that's uh, safe and um, wholeheartedly ready to fill us with uh, the Word of God. Hopefully everyone has a safe week and um, keep keep your heads to the sky. Praise God. Thank you, Wes. Thank you, Wes. My love to you and, and, and our family. And God continue to bless you. And now I just want to hear, I just need to hear her voice. I haven't heard her voice since she was a senior in high school. Uh, uh, Mrs. Kathleen Kuhn. Kathleen, can you come on and say hello so I can hear your voice? Hello. I don't know if you can hear me. I hear you. Praise God. <laughs> well, I think Paul and I woke up a little down this morning because our church is closed because of the virus. And um, I just feel really blessed that you're here. Uh, to talk to us about the word. We're actually walking right now and enjoying the beautiful countryside where we live. Praise God. Praise God. Kathleen, it is so good to hear your voice. And Paul, the last time I saw Paul was on Facebook. He was up on the roof, up on the side, <laughs> a scaffold on the side of the house, uh, repairing the house. Isn't that right? That is correct. Here, I'll put him on. Hey, Thanks Paul, come on. come on. God beautiful. bless you, Paul. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. How about you? I'm doing fine. So good to hear your voice, Great. and uh, I admire Great. you guys because you you stand for the Lord, and you've been yes. standing for the Lord for so many years. And I want to encourage you to keep on being a blessing, not only to your family, but you're a blessing to a lot of other people. Okay. Well, good. Thanks for coming on with us today. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank and you. That's what we hope to be a blessing to others. Praise Have a good God. day. Praise Amen. God. Thank you very Thank much. You. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. And uh, we have many other people on, so we can't bring everyone on. Um, cool. We give a shout-out to Ryan Trogler and Tara Trogler. It's a time of bereavement in their family. Tara's father passed away uh, down in, over in Mechanics, uh, Mechanicsville, Pennsylvania. So, Tara, we're praying much for you all. And um, we pray for the bereaved and the sick and the afflicted. And God has the answer for everyone. We're living in a time of hurt, ladies and gentlemen. Many people have been hurt. They've been beaten down. They've been deceived. They've been lied to. There's corruption all over the land. But you know what? God has the answer. And my heart rejoices, Dr. Bratton, my heart rejoices today because it was just a few days ago. It was on Thursday. I cried out to the Lord. I said, Lord, Lord, I'm asking you to touch the president to call a national day yeah. of prayer. That was on Thursday, Gene. And I told Jackie, mm. I, said, I said, Jackie, I asked the Lord to touch the president to call a national day of prayer and to realize that the only hope for this nation is to pray and to seek your face. And do you know what? The next day, the next day, everybody, the president announced that Sunday, this day, is yeah. a national day of prayer. It wasn't because of me, but I believe many people cried out to the Lord in, 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 in respect and honor to God that the only thing that's going to save this nation is that we pray and come back to the Lord. So I thank God. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't politicize on this uh, program, but I want to give a shout out to the president for making that declaration, and he even said, I, I, uh, I read in his words, he said, this is the only hope we have is to turn to God in prayer. That's what the president said. So no matter what you think about the president, ladies and gentlemen, the president called on the Lord uh, and has designated this day as a national day of prayer. And so I'm asking you to forget about the politicizing Forget about politics. I don't care if you're a Democrat or a Republican or a Dixiecrat or, or Utopian. Uh, it doesn't matter. Let's pray, but in our prayer, let's call upon the name of the Lord God Almighty in the name of Jesus. Now, look here, ladies and gentlemen. I ain't into all this, these 
uh, ecumenical prayers, you know, where you get a Muslim on the stage and a Hindu mm -hmm. on the stage and a Sikh on the stage and an agnostic on the stage and, an, and a, an atheist on the stage and then you get a Catholic, then you get a Protestant, and then you get a, a Jewish priest. No, 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 no. That ain't going to do nothing but cause more confusion. But when you and I call upon God, Kathleen and Paul, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, God will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon us. Praise God. Hey, let's pray. Let's ask Dr. Jean Bratton to lead us in prayer. Okay, Dr. Jean, I caught you off guard, so let, let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we humble ourselves before you. We ask that you forgive us of our sins, cleanse us of all iniquity. Thank you for this time together. We call this assembly in the name of Jesus to worship you and to call upon your name. And we unite in one accord in the name of Jesus. Create in us clean hearts, Lord. Father, let your anointing be upon this pastor and your people today. Give us your word. Hear our prayers. Lord, bless our president uh, who had the courage to declare this day as a day of prayer despite the uh, political ramifications he has to face. But, Lord, uh, one thing he knows, he knows that you are God and that only you can save this nation. And so, God, we declare today as a national day of prayer and ask that you will intercede not only on behalf of this nation, the United States of America, but on behalf of the whole world, Lord. And we ask your blessings and your presence and your anointing and your power and your healing and your deliverance in Jesus' name. And we ask that you'll save souls today, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Listen, I want to share something with you, ladies and gentlemen, and um, something historical. I'm a history teacher. And uh, Kathleen was one of, one of my former students a long time ago when I taught sociology at Upper Darby High School. Well, not a long time ago, Kathleen. A long time for me, but a few years ago for you. Okay? The National Day of Prayer, we're not confusing this day today with the National Day of Prayer that comes the first Thursday of every uh, uh, May. In the month of May, the first Thursday is designated as National Day of Prayer, and that has been a designation since uh, 1952 when Congress established the National Day of Prayer. But this day today is a special National Day of Prayer because it comes out of the urgency of the American people led by the President of the United States uh, to call upon the name of the Lord and uh, the the, the first foremost thing most people think about today is they want deliverance from the coronavirus pandemic. And my subject today is entitled, The, the Cure for the Coronavirus Pandemic. But um, we're going to go in our sermon today, we're going to go beyond the coronavirus pandemic and let you know that it's more than coronavirus. This thing, this need for a National Day of Prayer, goes deeper, much deeper than any coronavirus. So we want you to stay on uh, for the next uh, 30 minutes. Stay with us as, as, as we take a look at God's word for today and God's cure, not only for the coronavirus, a pandemic, but God's cure for what ails this nation and the nations. There's a worldwide thing happening, ladies and gentlemen, and we need to take note of it. That is why we have to call on the name of the Lord. But let me give you just a little history of, of the National Day of Prayer and why when, when crunch time has come to America in many, time, many events, uh, historically, when crunch time came, there were leaders who called upon the Lord and they commanded that the people fast and pray and call upon the Lord. George Washington did this uh, even as 
he was leading the Continental Army and he was in Valley Forge and the army was starving to death. Men were dying and the British were living in warm homes in Philadelphia and Princeton and in and, and Trenton, New Jersey, while the army of the United States was trying to survive a severe winter. And Washington sent a message to Congress to ask the people to declare a national day of fasting and prayer so that uh, the American, Americans can win the revolution. And then there were other times in American history when leaders called a prayer. But I want to share this with you. 157 years ago, listen to this, 157 years ago, this was written in 1863, ladies and gentlemen. You would think that this was written yesterday. Listen to this. Whereas the Senate of the United States devoutly recognizing the supreme authority and just government of Almighty God in all the affairs of men and nations has by a resolution requested the president to designate and set apart a day for national prayer and humiliation. And whereas it is the duty of nations as well as of men to owe their dependence upon the overruling power of God to confess their sins and transgressions in humble sorrow, yet with assured hope that genuine repentance will lead to mercy and pardon, and to recognize the sublime truth announced in the Holy Scriptures and proven by all history that those nations only are blessed whose God is the Lord, and Inasmuch as we know that by his divine law, nations like individuals are subjected to punishments and chastisements in this world, may we not justly fear that the awful calamity of civil war, which now desolates the land, may be but a punishment inflicted upon us for our presumptuous sins? to the needful end of our national reformation as a whole people, we have been the recipients of the choicest bounties of heaven. We have been preserved these many years in peace and prosperity. We have grown in numbers, wealth, and power as no other nation has ever known. But we have forgotten God. This is in the document, ladies and gentlemen. But we have forgotten God. We have forgotten the gracious hand which preserved us in peace and multiplied and enriched and strengthened us and have vainly imagined in the deceitfulness of our hearts that all these blessings were produced by some superior wisdom and virtue of our own. Intoxicated with unbroken success, we have become too self-sufficient to feel the necessity of redeeming and preserving grace, too proud to pray to the God that made us. It behooves us then to humble ourselves before the offended power to confess our national sins and to pray to the God who made us. And then uh, this document continues, and I do hereby request all the people to abstain on that day from their ordinary secular pursuits and to unite at their several places of public worship and their respective homes in keeping this day holy to the Lord and devoted to the humble discharge of the religious duties proper to that solemn occasion. All this being done in sincerity and truth, let us then rest humbly in the hope authorized by the divine teachings that the united cry of the nation will be heard on high and answered with blessings no less the pardon of our national sins and restoration of our now divided and suffering country to its former happy condition of unity and peace in witness whereof I have here unto set my hand and caused the seal of the United States to be affixed, done at the city of Washington the 30th day of March in the year of our Lord, 1863, 1863, signed by Abraham Lincoln, 
President of the United States, William H. Seward, Secretary of State, presented to the uh, Senate by Senator James Harlan on March 1st, 1863, adopted March 3rd, 1863. I read to you, ladies and gentlemen, a document written 157 years ago in which the President of the United States realized this thing is too big for us. This thing is too big for our political party. This thing is too big for par partisan politics. This thing is too big for our own ingenuity and our own expertise. We need divine help. We need divine help for our nation. And ladies and gentlemen, it's in that vein that we come before you today and the Lord has given me this word he says there is a cure for the coronavirus pandemic there is a cure but God's gonna take us beyond the coronavirus pandemic ladies and gentlemen now the coronavirus has gripped the nation and many nations are afraid and and with the media running crazy like it's doing the media has taken this coronavirus thing now the nation is gripped in fear americans are gripped in fear and you know what this can be good i mean people are so afraid that they're going to die that they're willing to turn back to the lord but God's plan goes deeper than this, ladies and gentlemen, because God knows how people are. God knows how Americans are. God knows how Kenyans are. God knows how Russians are. God knows how the Chinese are. God knows how when people panic, they get religious. When people become afraid, come on, somebody, they get religious, and they know how to call on God for, for relief. It's like taking two aspirin, plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Mm. Oh, what a relief it is. God knows that we, are, and, and God knows how the church is. The church in America has grown so wealthy and so powerful and so self-centered and so uh, uh, self-righteous. Uh, the church in America doesn't even need God. The church in America, ladies and gentlemen, has kicked God out of his own church. The Holy Ghost can't even get into some fellowship mm -hmm. and and but God knows how the church is God knows how the religious people are God knows how the politicians are God knows how presidents are when presidents stop stroking themselves and, and, and stop uh, tweeting about themselves and stop uh, 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 text messaging about themselves and realize that hey I can't pull this off then they know how to go to the religious leaders they know how to go to the religious community but our president had our president his eyes I mean he had enough sense he had enough sense and I respect him for the that he said only God Amen. can deliver this nation I mean look here just two weeks ago ladies and gentlemen he said the coronavirus thing was a hoax I mean he laughed it off he joked it off that was two weeks ago then when his his friends started getting on his back and the press started riding his back he said well maybe there's something to this ladies and gentlemen don't put your trust in politicians the Bible says yeah. we are to obey those who have rule over us but they are not our God we are to appeal to God ladies and gentlemen in every situation Jesus said call unto me and I will answer thee." that's what the Lord said in Jeremiah 33 6 call unto me and I will answer thee I will show you great and mighty things which you know not Jesus said come unto me all you that labor and are heavy laden I will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart you shall find rest unto your souls and God is serious he wants us to come unto him but the problem in America and the problem in the, in the nations is we have developed these these semi demi gods these little gods whom we worship you know uh, there's one down in Texas uh, he was on he was on on TV this morning there's another one in Texas he's on TV this afternoon uh, there's one uh, over in Oklahoma uh, there's one in Philadelphia and and we have we've, we've uh, chosen our own little gods and we worship them and many of these people do not know the Lord Jesus Christ many of them 
do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to ask you all to mute your phones because there's some disturbance in the background. Okay, we're recording, and we don't want any kind of disturbance. So make sure your dog's not barking and, and you're not talking or having conversation. Praise God. And so we we'll have to mute you if you are. Okay, so God is serious. God is serious. God knows how religious we can be. And the problem with the church, praise God, I want to greet my friend Chuck Thompson out there also uh, from Ardmore, Pennsylvania. God knows how religious we can be. And, and we call on the Lord only when it's expedient for us and only when we need him. And, and, and the thing is, we want to get this monkey off our back. It's like, you know, if you're a cocaine freak, you know, and cocaine's killing you, you want to take some relief. Or, or you're hooked on opioids and you want to get detox. If you can just get this off your back, if I can just get clean, then I can start all over again. And, or, or, or get delivered from this alcohol problem, you know, sign yourself in for 30 days and get detox, get cleaned out, and then you can start all over again. And most people go through those programs, but they don't get delivered because they do not commit their lives to Jesus Christ. And so guess what? They go back to the same old, same old, and it's the same old thing. And God knows how presidents are. God knows how demog demagogues are. God knows how political leaders are. And God knows how some of you pastors are, some of you bishops, some of you elders. Some of you apostles, some of you, you know how to deceive the people. You can get your people fired up religiously so you can work your programs. But God's got a program, ladies and gentlemen, and it's bigger than coronavirus. We're going to give you the cure for the coronavirus uh, pandemic very soon. But we just want to let you know that God knows who's playing games and who's serious. And that nation whose God is the Lord is blessed the scripture says, and, and blessed is the man that makes the Lord his trust, leans not into his own understanding. Uh, when God sees people seeking his face for a change, for deliverance, when God knows that you uh, really want to change, then God will bless you mightily, and, and God, God will bless those who diligently seek him. So we're talking today about the cure for the coronavirus. I believe God's going to save people today. God's going to deliver people today. And so we want uh, people like uh, Paul and Kathy uh, Kuhn to keep on preaching Christ Jesus uh, uh, up there in, in central Pennsylvania, we want Melanie Tobias to keep on witnessing down here in Georgia. We want Gene Bratton in Wilmington, West Carter. You all keep on doing what you do. We want uh, Chuck Thompson, uh, Ardmore, I think that's Second Baptist or First Baptist in Ardmore. Uh, we want you all to keep on preaching the word of God and, and, and telling people that the only hope we have is in Jesus Christ, is in Jesus Christ. Look here, let me tell you something. The coronavirus is not a big thing for God. Ladies and gentlemen, God brought us through Ebola. Remember the Ebola crisis? I remember when I came back from Africa during the Ebola crisis, people looked at me cockeyed. Some folks, Gene Brett and some of them didn't even want to come near me. Oh, he might have Ebola. Uh, remember the HIV crisis just several years ago? Amen, yeah. And, and, and with the HIV crisis, let me tell you something. This is personal. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to say it. I'm going to lay it out there. A person very, 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 very dear to me, a member of my family, ladies and gentlemen, called me during the middle of the HIV crisis, cried, boo-hooed, stayed on the phone for about an hour and a half crying, and, and he said, I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying of HIV, and, and, and will you pray for me, will you pray for me? And, and I cried with him, and I mean, this is someone very, very close to me, and, and, and I prayed for him, and I said, now, God, I believe God's going to deliver you. I believe God hears our prayers. But I want to warn you, when God delivers you, stay free. Mm. Yes. Avoid that sodomy. Avoid that homosexuality. Ladies and gentlemen, there are people, they come to God when, when it's crunch time, 
And they yeah. have you. I mean, I mean, people know how to manipulate uh, the Christians. They know how to man- manipulate mm-hmm. prayer warriors and intercessors. And 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 intercessors. We groan and travail. God will get us up out of bed while everybody else is sleeping, and we're tr- groaning mm-hmm. and travailing for people's souls. And people often take us for granted, like we take Jesus yes. for granted. And so this uh, uh, member of my family, he he cried and we prayed and I groaned and travailed and prayed and prayed in the spirit, went in the tongues and prayed in the Holy Ghost until we got the breakthrough and, and I told him God said, You're healed. You're healed. And 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 shortly after that he got the medication that they had developed, the the, the serum that they had developed and 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 uh, as he continued taking his uh, uh medication his his countenance changed and his health came back and and he was restored, ladies and gentlemen. And a lot of people are waiting for uh, uh, what's the coronavirus uh, antidote? What's the what's the antidote for the coronavirus? They're waiting for a serum to be be developed. But ladies and gentlemen, the serum is not going to save you. It's not going to cure you because there are a Amen. lot of you out there. Let me tell it like it is. A lot of y'all are scared. You've gone to the supermarket. You bought hundreds, tons of toilet paper. You bought tons of 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 of, of, of uh, uh, tissues and Kleenexes. I know because I went to the store looking for a roll of toilet paper yesterday and couldn't get it. <laughs> and 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 uh, all they have was rolls of paper towels. I said, okay, well, if, if push comes to shove, I have to use roll paper towels. Paper towels <laughs> are paper towels are rough back there. Uh, paper towels are like that dog sliding. Remember that dog. Uh, uh, Chuck Thompson, I see you laughing. Paper towels are like that dog sliding on sandpaper. Ross, Ross, Ross. <laughs> amen. But, amen. But see, the coronavirus, ladies and gentlemen, there is a cure for it. But God wants to cure sin. Let me take yeah. you back to my relative, my loved one. It wasn't long after his health was restored that he went back into that same old thing. Now he's married to a man. I'm going to tell it like it is. He's married to a man. I mean, they're in a same-sex marriage relationship, and they go to church, and they go to a church that supports and caters to same-sex marriages. Ladies and gentlemen, that's how people in this nation and the world are being deceived by the devil. You've got preachers out there preaching it's all right for a man to sleep with a man. It's all right for a woman. We've got men in pastoring churches where they're married to men. We've got women pastoring churches where they're married to women, and and yep. everybody says it's all right, and they try to find scriptures where it's all right, but it ain't nowhere in my Bible that it's all right. And so what you have people doing, right. they know where to run. They know who to manipulate. They know how to play that game, and, and, and they know why to play the game and when to play that game, and they get people to support them. And so so I hope the president is sincere in calling upon the name of the Lord. Well, he declared this day as a national day of prayer, and so I'm going to use this day as a national day of prayer. I believe, and I believe that you believe, that if we call upon the name of the Lord and repent, on behalf of ourselves, first of all, then on behalf of our families and loved ones, then, ladies yes. and gentlemen, some of us have to repent on behalf of our church fellowships. Some of those churches are out there, ladies and gentlemen, so far removed from God that is it's sickening to God's spirit. And then if we repent on behalf of the nation, perhaps, peradventure, hopefully, God will we we'll hear from heaven. And so here's the cure for the coronavirus pandemic and the cure for the pandemics coming down the line because there are many more coming, ladies and gentlemen, many more. We've seen the Ebola crisis. 
We've seen the SARS crisis. We've seen the HIV crisis. We are seeing the coronavirus crisis. But there are many more. Why? Because people have made up their minds. They're going to play games of God. They're going to kick him out of their churches, out of their homes, out of the government. They don't want God around. The only time they need God is when they need an Alka-Seltzer or two, and they pick God off the shelf, tear the paper open, plop one or two Ooh. little gods in their water and go plop, plop, fizz, fizz, and they have the whole church or have you praying for them, and they have you plop, plop, fizz, fizz to get that bad boy off their back, get their monk, that monkey off their back. But ladies and gentlemen, HIV is a piece of cake compared to what's coming down the road. And now I've got, and now that same relative won't even speak to me. He won't even talk to me I, because I preach holiness and righteousness. I don't yeah. preach, oh, go ahead and keep on doing what you're doing. And, and I reminded him, you forget when you were dying of AIDS and you asked me to help pray you through. And I prayed and God answered our prayer. But ladies and gentlemen, pe people will manipulate you. They will use you. But then you mm -hmm. still, it's, we've mm -hmm. got to walk in love when they step on us, when they kick us to the curb. Yep. We still have to love them when the, the government kicks us to the curb, when the president uh, uh, denounces us, when, when, uh, when we get lies from the White House and from the Congress. We've still got to love those people. When the church yep. leaders manipulate us, we still have to stand on the word of God, ladies and gentlemen. And love one another. The Bible says, lest any root of bitterness be found in us, whereby many be defiled. And so we can't even allow, no matter how much they kick you, Gene Bratton, no matter how much they talk about you, Chuck Thompson, we <laughs> still have to love them and pray for them and minister to them and look for the opportunity to bring healing to them, even when the church kicks you out. I've been kicked out of many churches in my life because I preach holiness and righteousness, but you still have to forgive, forgive the very ones who have harmed you. I had to forgive a man yesterday, and well, I forgave him last year, a man who did me wrong, a very bad injustice. But I'm glad I forgave him because when I found the report yesterday about his, his physical condition, I'm glad I forgave him and, and, and am not harboring any bitterness towards him. Ladies and gentlemen, we can't expect God, we cannot expect God to move if we harbor bitterness in our hearts to anybody, living or dead, no matter what they've done for us. And that's the way it was with Jesus. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. Mm -hmm. And on the cross, on the cross, on the cross, Jesus looked down at the very same ones who were killing him, the same ones who were jeering him, making fun of him, mocking him. And then Jesus looked down 2,000 years later, and he saw you and me. He saw the church playing games with God. And Jesus cried out from the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And even when people do know what they're doing, Jesus is praying, God, forgive them. And the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well, Pastor Carter, you've taken a long time to give us a cure from, from, from the coronavirus, I really came on to hear what you have to say about the coronavirus because I've been coughing and hacking, my temper's up, I'm out breaking out in a sweat and, and got a fever. Well, I'm going to give you the cure for the coronavirus as God gave it to me. And it's the cure for the other viruses coming down the pike and the flus and the, and the, and the pestilences and the plagues. And, and, and God said in Psalm 91, no plague shall come nigh thy dwelling. And I'm going to stand yeah. on the word of God with that. No plague shall uh, come nigh thy dwelling. But here's God's cure. Second Chronicles 7.14 is the cure for the coronavirus pandemic. Second Chronicles 7.14 can be applied to 
any situation that comes against you, your family, your church, your yeah. nation, and the nations. And God makes a promise to uh, Solomon in Second Chronicles, mm. and he makes the same promise to you and to me, ladies and gentlemen, and this promise will continue until Jesus comes back again. And in that 14th verse of Second Chronicles, God gives us four stipulations that yeah. we must meet. He said, if my people... Number one, which are called by my name will humble themselves. Mm. That's the yeah. church. The church today is God's people who are called by his name. We call ourselves Christians. We say we're a Christian nation. We say we're a Christian family. If you call yourself a Christian. Now look, look, the emphasis in curing the the coronavirus pandemic is not on the scientists. The onus is not on the president. It is not up to the Congress. Um, these political cronies out there and the, and, the, and the press and media have screwed things up so much, they're blaming the president for the virus. Mm. They're blaming the Republicans for the virus. They're blaming the Democrats. That's how stupid people are. Ladies and yep. gentlemen, the president can't control the virus. The Congress cannot control the virus. Bishop so-and-so cannot control the virus. Uh, uh, apostle so-and-so cannot control the virus. God said, the, and, the, and the responsibility of getting deliverance from this virus, listen to me, ladies and gentlemen, the responsibility is not on the government. The responsibility of getting this nation delivered is not on the Congress, not on the Republicans, it's not on the voters, it's not on the Democrats. The responsibility for getting America delivered, the responsibility of getting China delivered, the responsibility of getting Russia delivered, the responsibility of getting Afghanistan delivered, the responsibility of getting the world delivered from this virus, and, and whatever is coming down the pike, the responsibility is not on governments and leaders among men. The Bible declares from the mouth of God, God himself said, if my people, mm. yeah. which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, Yes. And turn from their wicked ways. That's on the church, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. That burden is on everybody who calls himself by the name of Jesus Christ, who labels yourself as a Christian. If you've been born again and you've been called a Christian, then the responsibility is not on God, it is not on the president, it is not on the leadership of the nation, the responsibility is on the church. And you know the church is so busy, still selling their dinners, still hosting Friday night bingo. Many churches are upset now, church leaders are upset now, because they've declared martial law in some communities, and people cannot fellowship and meet over 10 people in a building, and so churches are angry because that means their funds, their finances have been cut off. They're not concerned about people dying of some virus. They're concerned because their finances have been cut off, and so they're going to put the finger on the Republicans or on the Democrats. But God says this, ladies and gentlemen, and if you have any problem with this, you take it to God. I'm the preacher, and I preach the gospel, and I'm not afraid to preach what thus saith the Lord. Those of you who know me know I'm not afraid of man, woman, demon, or beast when I'm under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Hmm. If the anointing's on, not on me, I'm running scared like everybody else. But hallelujah for the anointing. The anointing yeah. breaks the yoke, and the word of God carries with it an anointing power. And, and 
demonstrations in the Holy Spirit. God's word will not return unto him void. God said, if my people, which are called by my name, this is the church, will humble themselves. Mm. The church needs to humble themselves. When's the last time you saw a deacon in the church take a knee? When's the last time you saw a pastor take a knee in front of the congregation? I once preached a 45-minute sermon, Kathy Kuhn, on my face in the middle of the floor. I laid down with the microphone and preached on my face. God humbled me. The Word of God says, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. How many people pray? I mean, I'm not talking about some generic prayer that you downloaded from the Internet or you called your prayer party, girl, we need to pray. And then you keep on shopping in the mall. Ain't nobody calling on God. You ain't rattling. You ain't grabbing the horns of the altar. You're talking a prayer. You're talking the talk. But God said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray mm. and then seek my face in every situation, whether it's the coronavirus, whether it's HIV, whether it's a financial crisis, whether it's world economic collapse, whether it's the threat of war, whether it's uh, stuff growing on your body, whatever the situation is, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves. That means you've got to stop being so puffed up in pride. Stop yeah. being so arrogant. Get a teachable spirit. Let somebody say something to you that's godly. Stop rebelling against everything somebody says to you. Stop being nasty to folks. Stop being mean to people. Mm. Stop being mm -hmm. vicious. Come on. Yeah. And we got churches full of these nasty, bitter, vicious people who call themselves Christians. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my faith, then turn from their wicked ways. Yes, we've got to turn from these wicked ways. Because when we take that aspirin, it could be a scripture. It could be somebody laying hands on us. It could be being slain in the spirit. I remember we used to lay hands on people, and they get slain in the spirit, and then they mm. go off and keep on committing fornication, keep on committing adultery. But I got slain in the spirit at Pastor Carter's church. Pastor Carter laid hands on me, and I got, I got laid out in the spirit. Then you get up, and you keep on going back, running after somebody's wife. God does not play, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. He will not be mocked. If my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my faith, and turn from their turn. wicked ways. My loved one still hates my guts today because I said, now you've got to turn from your wicked ways. You've got to get out of this. And then, you know, you get people say, well, God made me to be a homosexual. No, God never made a homosexual. Mm -hmm. God did not make you to be a homosexual. You chose that lifestyle. Right. And you choose to be with like minded people. Yeah. And you're getting and you're feeding off the the, the uh, ungodly rhetoric and the lies and the deception that Satan has given them to feed you. You have made a choice. Mm -hmm. But you can be delivered. Mm -hmm. You can be delivered. It is not too late for you to be delivered. I've told him. And I'll tell you, and I know there are folks listening to me right now, some of you hate my guts, but I'll tell you, you can be delivered. You don't have to continue being a liar. You don't have right. to continue being a whoremonger. Right. You don't have to keep on driving to your neighbor's house after your neighbor goes to work to sleep with his wife. Hmm. You don't have to continue smoking dope. You don't have to keep on drinking that liquor. And you don't have to keep on being mean-spirited and selfish. You can truly be born again and set free mm. because God made a promise. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves, number one, 
seek my face, number two, pray, humble themselves, number one, pray, number two, seek my face, number three, and turn from their wicked ways. Then God says, then, listen to this, listen to this, the cure for the coronavirus pandemic and everything else, then will I hear from heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got God's ear when you do those four things. You've got yeah. his ear. The blessings are coming. Then yeah. will I hear from heaven. A lot of people in the same-sex church aren't hearing from heaven. They, they're hearing from the same-sex preachers. But you can, then will I hear from heaven, God says, and I will forgive your sin. I will forgive you. And then God says, and I will heal your land. Whether your land be your body, whether your land be your marriage, whether your land be your family, whether your land be your church, whether your land be your job, whether your land be your nation, whether your land be the international community, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, God promises. And he's not a man that he should lie. He says, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive your sin. I will heal your land. There's mm. not one of us too far gone. No matter what you're in or what's in you. You're not too far gone that you cannot be saved, you cannot be delivered. So I, 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 I say to you, stop panicking, stop being afraid of some virus, stop going, running to the store and hoarding uh, toilet paper and water. It's all right to stock up on some things, but don't hoard it. Mm -hmm. I read last week where one celebrity, I'm not going to call his name, bought 64 cases of toilet paper. Now, 64 cases of toilet paper, that's a, I ain't even going there. Dr. Bratton, I ain't even going there. He just doesn't have, he or she just doesn't have to buy any more for the rest of the year. Now, the rest <laughs> of their lives are 64 cases, unless they're full of it, huh? That's right. Yeah. Praise God. God's got the cure. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, God's got the cure. God's got the cure. Yeah. Amen. Jackie Amen. Carter, she's so funny. My wife, she's so funny. She telling me, you better stock up because, you know, you got this colonoscopy scheduled for next week. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck Thompson, my wife. You remember Jackie Henry. Now it's Jackie yes, I Carter. do. Chuck. How are you? Yeah, we're doing fine, praise God. And Jackie said, you know you better stock up because you know you got this colonoscopy and you know you're full of it. <laughs> well, that, that's my... <laughs> right. Well, seriously, ladies and gentlemen, seriously, let's take God at his word. Let's repent and let's trust God, not only for ourselves, but for the nation and for the nations. Let us pray. Yeah. <laughs> Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. We acknowledge that you are God and that this situation we're facing in this nation and the nations is bigger than all of us. But we have heard your word and we have responsibility as the church. And it starts with me and then my brother, my sister. We have the responsibility to humble ourselves and Pray and seek your face and call upon your name. Help us to do that. Then, Lord, you said, you'll hear from heaven. You'll forgive our sin. You will heal the land. And so we humble ourselves. Forgive us, Father. Forgive me. We have sinned and come short of your glory. And we have caused others to sin. I have caused others to sin. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive us. Cleanse us of all iniquity. We call upon you, God. Only you can help us. Only you can save us. And we thank you, Father. We trust you. We trust you. Keep us close to you. Keep us loving one another. Keep us walking by faith and not by sight. You said no weapon formed against us shall prosper. 
And so we pray for those who are suffering from this coronavirus, that you heal them and deliver them. And then we pray for this nation that is suffering so, from so many evil things. Heal us and deliver us. Forgive us, God. And we thank you and we bless you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, uh, I promise you, I promised you earlier this week that my message would be the cure for the coronavirus pandemic. And uh, God gave us the cure for the coronavirus pandemic and for everything else. Praise God. Now, uh, I know I got a little bit personal in, in one of my testimonies and did not mean to put that relative down, but uh, just a word. Maybe perhaps the relative won't listen to me, but maybe they listen to you if you know who I'm talking about. And maybe you can help that person to get delivered. You know, when they shut you out, God can use someone else to bring the message. So let us uh, 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 blow the trumpet in Zion, Zion. Sound the alarm in God's holy mountain. Blow the trumpet in Zion, Zion. Sound the alarm. Praise God. Praise God. We thank God for you. We're going to stop the recording, but we certainly would like to have uh, your input and your dialogue uh, as we continue. Thank you for tuning in live and those who are listening to the recording. If you have any questions or need prayer, contact me, please. I'll be glad to talk with you. Uh, send me a message, Leroy Carter 69 at yahoo.com or, or hit me up on YouTube or Facebook or uh, check out our website. And uh, we'll be glad to have prayer for you because we love you and you're very important to us. Praise God. Now, you know, you will recognize on this program, we don't ask you for your money. We accept offerings, but we don't ask you for your money. You support your local church. May God bless you.